Hey friends, Mike and Jess here. <laughs> and welcome to Regeneration Nation TV. Today we are watching a video, Top 10 Things America Stole from Britain. Oh man, it's about to go down. This is Watch Mojo. I like this. Uh, Watch oh, Mojo UK. UK. Okay, the that's UK specific. Edition. I've never watched a video from the UK mm -mm. Watch Mojo channel. Yeah. So this is a first. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm excited to see things that we jacked. Right yeah. Now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Awesome. Um, this will be interesting. I'm just gonna though. melt into my seat real quick. The thumbnail was from The Office, and I knew that uh, like there's the UK version of The Office, and that came first by Ricky Gervais. Yeah, right? yeah. And then there's the American version. Yep. So I'm interested to see what else yeah. there is. We got links for this original video down below, and without further ado, let's get into this. Let's do it. From pastries to patriotic sing-alongs. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things America stole from Britain. It's the light bulb. Let's not get into this, okay? No. We already got into the light bulb discussion in one of our other videos. <laughs> People are still commenting on that. Stop. You just oh, commented my gosh. on it. UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks oh, for the top 10 things America stole from Britain. He likes American stuff. Oh. Before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're counting down famous facets of American culture which actually originated in Britain. While standout British inventions are subject for another list, today's countdown tackles typically American things, which the US has the UK to thank for. Number 10. What, Gordon Ramsay? Y'all can't claim him, okay? What are you talking about? We can't claim him either. This is gonna be a borderline comedy <laughs> video as well, okay? I'm ready to take the piss out of you guys right back, Ooh, all right? Oh, I love it. I'm just messing with you. US <laughs> and the UK to thank for. Breakfast. Number apple 10, pie. apple pie. You can have it. I don't know apple pie. As American as apple pie, right? Wrong. The sweet treat is a staple on US dining tables, but the British were the first to serve it way back in the 1300s. A popular dessert throughout European history, with Dutch and Swedish styles also inspiring menus worldwide, it was taken across the pond with the 17th century colonists. Since then, apple pie has become a standout symbol of US patriotism, as well as a central component to a teen comedy franchise. It's not what it looks like. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I <Y -MCA>. <laughs> Way before village people turned this institution into a cheesy disco anthem, and long before the YMCA swept across America, the Young Men's Christian Association was the brainchild of English philanthropist George Williams. Dismayed by working conditions in 18th century London, Williams conceived the now famous charity as a safe place for its patrons. While the movement's worldwide influence is something to be proud of, difficult to imagine Williams joining in with the dance moves. Okay, so pause for a second because my knew mind. I never what YMCA stood for. Me either. I was just oh, about no. to say that. Like I knew that it was young men's, but I didn't know after that. So I didn't. I knew that that part was there, but we've dude, had memberships. To just there. these two things right here. Like we've taken the uh, apple pie as a symbol of patriotism. Like that's what they say. Like every time, every Fourth of July, you have a, a freaking. Every time you see an apple pie, you think America. And that's so shady. Well, at least we do as we do. Americans. As Americans is what I'm saying. I don't even like it. But and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's patriotic. I love, I love me some apple pie. Right there. Okay. Uh, American pie might have ruined it for me a little bit. But uh, definitely love apple pie for sure. But, like, that's so crazy. Me, like, what? That's insane. The YMCA. Like, what? This is crazy. That's like Too a. so far that it's like, okay, fine. Sure. Take them. <laughs> I didn't really like them that much anyway. We can share them, friends. Number eight, chocolate bars. I think oh, I'll eat on. it now. I didn't ever think that that was ever <laughs> Candy bars here, are but... big business stateside. But before Mars, Hershey's, Milky Bar, or Baby Ruth, there was one bloke in Bristol making confectionery history. Joseph Fry finalized the first mass-produced chocolate bar in the mid-1800s, around the time that the Dutch developed a chocolate press. Fry's chocolate cream hit shelves in 1866 with a famed fondant filling, and the bar can still be bought today. John Cadbury quickly followed suit, while the likes of Hershey's didn't arrive until the late 1890s. Number seven, sandwiches. I never really thought that like chocolate bars were an American thing. No. I knew that chocolate's been around for a lot longer than the United States has been around, so it's not. I would just I assume no... Belgium 
is where chocolate originated That's from. Waffles. I would okay. just no, but I don't know. I would just assume. <laughs> Isn't that Belgium chocolate? Isn't there a chocolate? Like, yeah, but I, know, I was but... joking. Like I said, <laughs> I'm in a joking mood. Could I have a glass of wine? Okay. Sandwiches. And, and how, okay, how, so far I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Sandwiches? I never thought that's it. Are there really Americans uh, walking around like we sandwiches? In, we that's invented us. the sandwich. Nobody ever thought about putting meat and cheese between bread. Sandwich. If you like. With a pickle? <laughs> All right. Thanks to world conquering fast food outlets, Homer Simpson and Joey Tribbiani, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this foodstuff was a US creation. However, the history of the sandwich is long and complicated, and very little of it happened in America. While early versions are recorded across Europe, it's named after the fourth Earl of Sandwich in Kent. The story goes that he was an ardent gambler, and meat between bread was the simplest way of eating without disrupting a game of cards. Sandwich for display purposes only. He said the fourth Earl of Sandwich? Yeah. That was his name? <laughs> yeah. Or that was the place he was that the was Earl That was the place, of. yeah. He was the Earl. That's crazy. <laughs> it was the simplest way of eating without disrupting a game of cards. Sandwich for display purposes only and should not be eaten. <laughs> Number six, The Office. That's what she said. <laughs> And yes, we mean the TV show and not the actual open plan this workplace, which is literally my favorite a show ever, and I want to watch the UK version of it because that's where it originated Jeez. from, and I know that's going to be super hilarious because I already love British comedy, but like the, the Office, I could watch that over and over again. I freaking love The Office. I really yeah, do. You love it a little too much. I did, like, <laughs> maybe. Are you watching The Office again, really? I will watch it over and over again. That's the only show that I can say that. I can Well, confirm. there's a couple, but yeah, I can watch that over she and over again. She will watch it over and over again. And yes, it's we so mean good. the TV show and not the actual open plan workplace, which is largely a German invention. Anyway, unlike a lot of American remakes of British TV, The Office US did manage to tap into most of what made its predecessor purr. But after nine series and a shed load of awards, let's just remember where it all started. Steve Carell's Michael Scott is hilarious in his own right, but for fans of the British original, he'll always be David Brent in disguise. It only was Number five, for two years? plastic surgery. Wow, that came out of me. From Botox to boob jobs, America is the world's leading market for cosmetic surgery, with millions going under the knife every year. But the industry was by no means born in the USA. Sir Harold Gillies is often credited as the father of plastic surgery, a New Zealand-born, London-based surgeon who gathered leading physicians to treat That's thousands fake. of That's soldiers who had been injured out. or disfigured in World War I. I Gillies' look. work became a blueprint for all sorts of reconstructive procedures and a starting point for today's aesthetic options. Number four, the light bulb. Y'all can, ah. can have the plastic surgery. Okay, <laughs> now let's get into the controversial No, 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 no. Before we do that, though, we need to get nice with it, okay? Because the one thing that I want to say about plastic surgery, there's a lot of people that have to get plastic surgery for certain reasons, medical reasons. I appreciate you and saying I get that. Because he literally but, said during war times and yeah, stuff. So definitely. Yes, so very... it definitely was invented for a good reason, for probably for a good reason for people it's to get fault those for things that are... The ladies skin and stuff yeah. like that but for all those people out there that think they need plastic surgery to look better you're beautiful the way that you are and god made you that way for a reason unless it's medically needy mind. unless you're medically in need of it and it's something that is you know life or death then just yeah don't change who you are you're beautiful well said just saying just now let's go let the battle begin oh for man that's what you wanted today's wanted the whole time. options Number four, the light bulb. A supposedly serial stealer of other people's ideas, Thomas Edison's light bulb moment is considered one of the most significant steps in modern technology. Hey Edison, how about sharing some of those light bulbs, huh? Hey, figure it out for yourself, man. But experts are continually divided on just how much Edison did to develop the design. Before the Wizard of Menlo Park, there were countless other scientists creating electric light and light bulbs, not least British pioneers including Humphrey Davy and Joseph Swan. The anti-Edison camp claims that the inventor's only skill was knowing when to patent. One thing yes. Edison did invent, for a 100% genuine Edison invention, that we use every day probably, most of us. Is it uh, nasal hair clippers? Number three, donuts. Listen, hey, I wasn't around back then. I don't know. I will admit, here in the US, you were taught, if you ask probably 50, 49 out of 50 Americans who invented the light bulb, 
Thomas Edison. Yep. They will say that. Yeah. So I do think that there needs to be more there needs to be more context around that whole entire situation. Yeah. Um, I feel like it shouldn't, it's not that long ago mm-hmm. to where we shouldn't know exactly what went down. Yeah. But we have had this come up in another comment section. And from what I was able to look up and research, um, it seems like even before Thomas Edison was born, they were there was work on the fluorescent light bulb. The one that he... Patented. Patented was the one that lasted the longest, that was the most sustainable, so that's why he gets a lot of the credit. There were people in the comments like, he didn't do any of the work. The people he had working for him did all that work. And I'm like, well, that's, I can't find anything on that. So it's like, again, I wasn't around back then. Yeah. I don't really have a dog in this fight, um, but I'm just going off of what I was able to research. And I, I think that there needs to be like a clear cut one thing brought that just solves all of this. Um, and, and one thing that I like my train of thought went to like, OK, we've been trying to develop a cure for cancer for a very long time. There have been people working on it. And who knows when we're going to make that breakthrough mm-hmm. that like completely cures it. There's probably somebody that's not even born today that will end up being that person who finally takes all of the work from all of the people who were working on the cure for cancer before they were even born, and they make the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And then hundreds of years from now, when people look up who who cured cancer, it's going to be that person who gets the credit. And it's not going to be all of the names of the people who started the work on it, who continued the research for years and years and years. You know, if you really, really dive into it, you'll find that information. But it's like it's the one who gets the the working product. And uh, I know there's a lot of controversy around that. And I'm sure we're going to read about it in the comments. But it's like, again, I wasn't around back then. You weren't around back then. We're doing the best we can to look up the research that's available, the information that's available, which from what I saw, it's all over the freaking place, which I don't get. Like, why isn't there just, it's just, boom, here's all the information. There's, it seems like a lot of, the, there's a lot of bias in what you read about this. So mm-hmm. it's like on one, one way or the other, if it's an American who made the research paper on it, or if it's somebody in the, in Europe who made the research paper on it, it's, it's very biased yeah. on both sides. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't freaking know. I think it's crazy that we don't know more here in America on all of the context around it though. Like I said, you ask any American, it's Thomas Edison. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything else. But that's our curriculum. Isn't, yeah, isn't here right. is what they teach us here. So it's yeah. not really our fault. That's what they teach us. So. It, yeah, but it's our fault as a country, but not yeah. as people. Not as but people yeah. individually. Rainbows and butterflies in here. I'm glad we have electricity. We're friends again, right? <laughs> One little bite won't hurt you. Oh, not the donut. This now, the origin. Not the donut. Y'all can't have the donut. You can't. Nah, man. Well, they already had it and we stole it. This nah, is what this mm-mm. is about. We no. stole it. No way. No way. Now, this isn't real. When he's the saying donuts. that America stole it, is he saying that we like are trying to take credit for these things? Because that's really shady again. I'm just going to say. Because we could just that's share exactly these things. That's exactly what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> we, that is our thing. Okay. <laughs> And I'm not giving it back. All right, <laughs> sticky can't affair. Take it. Big claims and counterclaims sending historians <laughs> round and round in circles. However, while a stronger suggestion remains that the Dutch took the treats to America in the mid 19th century, a 2013 discovery seemingly proves that the Brits were baking them at least 50 years before. Baroness Elizabeth Dimsdale's cookbook dates to 1800 and includes a strikingly similar recipe a deep fried concoction of sugar, eggs, butter, and yeast. Add some icing, and it's the real deal. Yum. Number two. Listen, my great grandmother told me she invented donuts, and I believe her. <laughs> All right, that's the end of it. Well, of sugar, according to eggs. that, it would be your great 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 grandmother. So it's, even that's my farther back, she was. She never told a lie. <laughs> Butter and yeast. Add some icing, and it's the real deal. Oh, Number I'm two. Donut now. Baseball. <laughs> donut. A national sport and obsession in the U.S., baseball was it born is. in the U.K. There are countless records of bat and ball games being played in Blighty, starting with stool ball in the 1300s. Sure, the rules have changed and refined over the years, but the basic premise is usually the same. Someone pitches, someone swings, others try to catch. 
In fact, some researchers argue that baseball is an offshoot of cricket, an English obsession which didn't catch on across the Atlantic at all. Number one. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Cricket's like the number two most watched sport, most followed <sighs> sport in the world. Mm -hmm. But it's like over here, I've Not never nothing. even seen a game of cricket. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except in movies yeah. that are based in England, basically. So yeah. uh, it's pretty crazy, though. Yeah, that is crazy. It's Just because so... you guys were hitting rocks with wood doesn't mean whoa, baseball is Whoa, yours. whoa, whoa. You are definitely taking the piss right now. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> So taking the piss, not taking a piss. And you had some rules around the rock and wood hitting. <laughs> Too far, sir. But I appreciate baseball. that so much because I grew up listening to baseball. That was what's on the TV at my mamma and papa's house in Tennessee when we go there every Sunday for um, dinner slash lunch. And that would be on the TV. So that's like very like calming to me. Every time I hear a baseball game being commented on, yeah. it's just a calming feeling for me. I want to be in that room. I just want to be sitting there listening to it. I don't have to pay attention to the game. I don't really know what's going on. I don't have a favorite player. I don't have a team. But just as long as it's playing, it's just like home to me. It's it's very comforting. So that's comforting to know. In all seriousness, know. thank you for baseball. <laughs> I don't know what we would have done without it. Obsession, which didn't catch on across the Atlantic at all. Number one, the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> We finish with a final salute for great I've British influence that. on America. You've never seen that? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it looks stupid. It's a ridiculous movie. <laughs> we finish with a final salute for great British influence on American culture, because the US national anthem is sung to the tune of an 18th century English drinking song. Baltimore wordsmith Francis Scott Key that. takes full credit for the lyrics, but the melody was written by John Stafford Smith, a Gloucester-born hmm. composer. The Anacreontic song, as it was originally known, was regularly belted around a prestigious London gentleman's club, where wealthy people met to wine and dine. Do you oh, agree with I thought with he was going to play it. Oh, I was what? hoping he was going to play it because I've heard it before. That but, uh... is crazy. I didn't know that. I never knew that. I know it was Francis Scott Key that created the lyrics for that song, but I didn't know where the tune came from for sure. Yep, it's just like... Uh... The other day, the beginning of Crazy Train came on, and I thought it was the Trick Daddy song yeah. playing. She's like, no, this is... It's Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy man. Osbourne. I was like, I thought it was Trick Daddy. <laughs> it's just my point is that people will take tunes of songs and recreate You're and right. put lyrics over them. Yep. But it's like, you don't really know the origins. There's that one girl who does YouTube shorts, and it's like... Gen Z rocking to this song, and then before that, it was this that, song, was this, yeah. This generation rocking mm -hmm. to this song, which yep. predates that song, but it uses the same tone, yeah. And then go it back even further, and they're like, nah, 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 yeah. That this was is our the gen. original, yeah. I love that girl, <laughs> yeah. She's short. funny, she's hilarious. Anyways, that was uh, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't buy into a lot of these, especially the donut, I'm not accepting it. <laughs> He's I don't care what Watch Mojo UK said. My great grandmother invented the donut. You can believe so what you want to believe. Stupid. And I'm going to believe what I want to believe. No. In all seriousness, this is a fun video. It was. It was I very didn't cool know to about see. about a lot of them. Yep. I'm glad I finally know what the YMCA stands for. Mm -hmm. um, that was cool. If there's any other ones that weren't mentioned in this video, leave them down below. Yep. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you had fun with my stupid comments i'm in a bit of a jovial mood so <laughs> hope it made the video a little bit more enjoyable i, I think know. it did hopefully you're not mad at me like who is this guy thinks he's funny thinks he's witty and just making okay turn the video off you're probably not even here anymore yeah you probably just anybody who out. didn't like that is gone by now so anybody who did glad you're still thanks here. for sticking around yeah you and made it any other videos like this you want us to check out Send them down below and we'll get to them. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Bye, friends. Peace. I'm not scared of your love.